Hello and welcome to Buildings of Tomorrow. My name is John Lester and in today's episode we are talking about gaining operational efficiencies for buildings leveraging BIM and Digital Twin technology. I'm joined today by Kevin Bauer who is the lead for BIM and Digital Twin at Siemens Smart Infrastructure in Europe. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome, John. Um, let's start at the start. You know, BIM and Digital Twin are both topics we hear a lot about in our industry. For the sake of this discussion, and it is the first discussion we're going to have, I think there's a lot of things to cover, so we'll do a couple of different episodes along the way. But what do we mean when we say Digital Twin from your perspective? Yeah, Digital Twin is really the combination of BIM, static mm -hmm. data, and also sensor technology, so data from the IoT from the billing management systems like fire safety, security, billing automation. It's really the combination of these two technologies. Mm -hmm. And and because it's a combination, is that is that what brings these efficiencies? Because you know, in today's discussion, we're going to talk a little bit about why and and why is it important. And maybe you could give us a bit of a of a of a hint. Why is it important that that BIM and Digital Twin is there to help us gain those efficiencies? Yeah, you don't the, the big efficiencies you gain in the operation phase. Yeah, if you really combine the BIM data which you get from the planning phase or the construction phase until the operation phase, and then you combine it with the operational data from the room automation, from the primary energy systems like uh, presence detection, humidity, CO2 level, and if you combine them this data, you can enable new use cases like space analytics. 3D-based incident management, better energy efficiency. So it's really all about increasing the operational efficiency for building from an energetical perspective, from a facility management perspective, and from better space usage. Yeah, I understand. And, you know, for me, that's a really important aspect because too often we talk just about uh, BIM in the construction or the planning phase. We talk too much about how, uh, you know, the digital twin is useful, but you know, we have to be able to to get there. You know, and and if you had one hint, because you know, in our, in our following discussions, we're going to talk a few different things. We're going to use some real world examples that that you've you've gone through yourself and your team. You, you know, what's what's really the important step to bring these two different technologies, let's call it together? How do we get BIM and and combine it with this stuff to create that digital twin in the future? Yeah, I think it's really important if you. Uh, Design and build a build, uh, design and build a building. Yeah. Also, really think about in the early phase of how you want to operate the building. Yeah. And there, in the operation phase, all the sensor technology uh, is really important because you have a lot of maintenance. It's responsible for the energy efficiency, and therefore, it's also really important if you want to come to a digital twin to also do a BIM-based design of the building automation system, fire safety system, security system. We're certainly going to talk through them. It's, you know, the digital twin is really this combination of the information collected during the BIM phase uh, with the information and the live data that's then collected during the operation phase. Um, it's important for us because this insight really can deliver some of those those new benefits that, that deliver efficiency, like you discussed really quickly. And at the last phase, of course, you need to know where you're trying to get to because if you don't think about how you want to operate a building while you're going through the planning process, it makes everything much more difficult uh, in the next phase and the next phase. Let's uh, let's jump quickly into uh, into the why. Um, you know, there are there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of buildings around the globe. Uh, we know we need to operate them better. How can BIM and Digital Twin help us achieve that? <laughs> I think, you know, uh, a really important thing is, you know, we're in the construction business and, you know, construction business is one uh, important, let's say, one name you can say to the construction business is like Kautic. <laughs> and therefore, you know, we still have the same productivity like 20 years ago. At the same time, the automotive industry increased its productivity dramatically, but we're at the same level. Yeah? And yeah, BIM on the one hand is really one thing to help us getting the efficiency in general, like the automotive industry. But next to this, it's also really important to not just think about how to construct a building. It's also about thinking why we should operate buildings really much more efficient. Yeah? Thinking about of a, the Green Deal in the year of 2050, yeah? you know, buildings play a crucial role. Like, for example, 38% uh, percent of all the CO2 emissions are generated by buildings. 37% of the waste of buildings, so 37% of the uh, material becomes waste. And 55% of the 
facility maintenance programs are fixed when it breaks. And, you know, if you want to reach a green deal, we really have to work on this. Yeah. And and just for those listening, the Green Deal is a is a EU based uh, energy efficiency and sustainability uh, you know, almost let's call it a regulation, you know, a goal for the EU to really reach some quite significant savings uh, across many different parts of, of the, the company, but uh, across the organization, sorry. Um, but, you know, this building operation is a really key part of that, correct? Yeah, it's really crucial. You know, if we don't uh, correctly um, um, operate our buildings, they need much more CO2. Le- CO2. And mm-hmm. on the other hand, we don't use our resources efficiently. And, you know, I think you when you go through the news now, all the uh, <laughs> everything gets more expensive because, you know, the resources on our planet are fixed. You know, we can't make more of them. Yeah? And now we should we are really at the phase yeah, where we should reduce the the temperature the increasing of the temperature and also think about how we uh, use uh, the material what we need in buildings yeah? understand uh, and it's a discussion which is a good one and it's not the same the first time we've talked about sustainability uh, in this podcast and this show but what's interesting for us is is in in this particular discussion how do we get BIM and digital twin perspective because you know that really does offer capabilities and some of the values that you discussed before, which we're not able to do today with a more traditional approach. But let's talk a little bit about how. There's there's a, a process that we have to go through. There, there have to be um, some changes to what we do. Uh, do you have an example or can you talk us through a little bit? We know we want to do it. We want to achieve it. Uh, how do we go about it? You know, what, what are some of the steps that we need to undertake? Yeah, man, I can uh, guide you through a real project where we did this. It was a, a, a R&D project of the Vienna Business Agency together with Siemens and the Vienna Distributed Systems. It's the technology where I was a BIM manager and project, uh, project leader where we, let's say, really analyzed how to design, build, and operate buildings differently because today we have these big problems. Yeah? And the first thing which is really important is that before we start to design and build a building, we really have to think about on how we want to operate the building. And what are, let's say, what is for this kind of building? Is it a hospital or is it an industry building or is it an office building? What kind of use cases or targets you have uh, in the operation of the building? And then if you have these targets, then you drill down how you design it, how you build it, what kind of technology you have to, you need to have there. Yeah? So it's really about at the beginning, first step is, thinking differently about how we're thinking about the building as a product, be really customer centric or not just mm-hmm. design and build. And then yeah, the operation will come afterwards. Yeah? And that's a big shift, isn't it? Because uh, even if we're building uh, a building and we know that it's going to be a hospital or we know it's going to be an office building, it's not very often the actual, the conversation happens with the people operating it and you're setting things like you're discussing KPIs, uh, you know, expectations on how it should operate, you know, uh, down to the level of workflows and, and you know, what other things that need to be need to be achieved on a daily basis. How, how was that conversation? How did you get that information and that insight from from all the different stakeholders across this this uh, example? Yeah, you know, it's really about an early phase sitting together with the head Let's say the, the ones who are operating the building. So, for example, in a hospital, really talking to the CEO or the head of facility management and asking them, hey, what are your problems today? What kind of inefficiencies do you have? Yeah. And then, for example, we identified in a hospital, it's really a lot about how to increase the operational uh, facility management. Because imagine a hospital is opened 20 hours, seven days a week, Seven days, so seven days a week, 365 days a year, and for the next 50 years, yeah. And you know, if we can reduce for them the the alarm management, so for example, if there is an alarm, and we can help them identify this alarm quickly and resolving it, this is a business outcome which is really quantifiable. And then let's say they mm-hmm. can use the, the the stuff much better. Or a second use case, a topic in hospitals is. You know, they have a lot of staff, medical staff and nurses. And they also often said that you, they don't really know where is the next medical equipment or they don't know where the, the next doctor is. Yeah, And for them, um, asset tracking 
is really important. And if you then have these use cases based on real problems, then you need to define them and then think about how how we have to build and design the building or design and build the building and which kind of data do we need to come to these use cases. So for example, in this, when you think about this uh, uh, operational FM use case, we need to have a BIM-based management station. And for asset tracking, we need to have IoT sensors in there which enable this asset tracking. So in this early phase, really think about these use cases and then then if you have these use cases, really define them in an in asset information requirements concerning ISO 9650, and then mm-hmm. you can start the designing of the building. Yeah, but this is the first step. I uh, you just uh, mentioned a couple of uh, of pieces of information that I remember from my BIM training, and I forgot to mention at the start that you're you're a certified uh, building smart trainer, and I can see it working already. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> now, sure. now that's really important because I, I think you know it, it's not unusual for us to think today about how is a building going to be used, but maybe some of the problems or, or one of the things that you demonstrate and discuss here is that you take something really functional and operational and you don't lose the connection when you bring it back to the design. You don't just say, okay, to do this, we need this technology. And then, and then you lose that connection. You know, it's part of the, that design process um, also connected to the actual operational technologies behind it. So we go through this process where we talked about planning. What happens when we get to then construction? So we've got a, we have a BIM model. We have a detailed BIM model that really, gives us all the information, not just about the concrete, not just about the glass, but also about the operational technologies down to the sensors in some cases. What happens next? When we go on site, we break ground and we start to dig a hole. Yeah, you know, just some words again on the design process. I forgot to say this. Yeah, It's really important to also design the building automation system so all the fire detectors, security cameras, sensors, actuators are in there because we can then do already earlier compliance checking, for example, is this BIM model compliant to fire safety regulations? And do we have what's what's with the sensors? We can already do in advance uh, mm-hmm. configuration of the data points and the building automation control network. We can can figure in advance because, you know, then in the construction phase, it becomes crucial because we need to design our digital twin in advance. Mm-hmm. That we then when we come get on the real side and we construct it, then we want to construct a real digital twin based on the data from the digital twin. Mm-hmm. And therefore, we need to really integrate also the commissioning process so that at the end, you know, somebody really checks up are all the data points, what we configure also in the BIM model. Mm-hmm. And let's say, is everything there from a data, from an operational data perspective, but also from a geometrical perspective. And there, what we did in this project in Vienna and Aspern, we integrated 3D scanning into the complete uh, construction process as its own process or its own discipline. Just to give you an example, how do we do this? We did 18 3D scans in three phases, so structural work, equipment phase, as build phase. And mm-hmm. um, for example, when the people were finished in the, uh, they worked already the second floor and did there the concrete work, we scanned the first floor. And if they have finished uh, the, the mechanical systems, then we scanned the mechanical systems that at the end we had a 3D scan, 3D as built scan of the building, mm-hmm. which we then used to again adapt the BIM models to get really full fledged as built BIM models, check them then also against the data points that you know each data point, each sensor, uh, humidity sensor, whatever is in the BIM model has it right addresses. Because you know this is crucial because if you then come to the operation phase, imagine again your big hospital. You're really big. You have a lot of sensors distributed over the complete uh, building. This has to match. Otherwise, you will be have a hard time because you know if somebody closes the suspended ceiling, nobody will do it again afterwards because you know opening this will be really uh, costly. Yeah? So you need to do your homework yeah. in the creation of the digital twin. No, what I really like about that is, you know, you just discussed really quickly quite a, a lot of different benefits. Not only is it verifying the the actual delivery compared to the plan um, and verifying the placement of different equipment compared to the plan, but then also using that to update. So when you really walk out on handover day, you have a BIM model uh, that is is so accurate to what is reality 
and has all of the different equipments in it for that use case that you just described. You know, uh, if if uh, if I have a failure in a sensor, I know exactly where it is. I know exactly what it is, and if it's in an, an operation room, if it's in a storeroom, uh, or if it's uh, in a corridor, and this helps me in that next phase, in this operational phase, is that one of those core use cases where we see when the preparation is done correctly and when that planning is done down to that level of detail, you really start to to cash in the benefits in that operation phase? Exactly. Yeah. You know, if you have created this digital twin in this detail, then you have a really good billing documentation. And, you know, if you really know exactly how you documented everything, then, you know, it's also easy, much easier for you to do a better operation because you know, if something breaks, you have an alarm somewhere, then you can map mm -hmm. the alarm to the real object. And, you know, then you really quickly can identify there's an alarm. Where is it? And then from this where, from the BIM model, I can derive, also derive what's the priority. Imagine again, your hospital, as, uh, an alarm in an office room is not a big problem, but an alarm Tempo is broken in the surgery room. It's really important. You have to solve it really quickly because, you know, there could be a loss of pressure. And, you know, you could have a viral infection through your surgery. And, you know, exactly you know this priority. And next is you also exactly know where, as facility manager, where do I need to go? And how do I get there? And which kind of product I need to fix? Yeah? In, in today's world, yeah, it's a little bit of walking around and... Um, <laughs> It's unfortunately really inefficient. We identified yeah. that with this spatial intelligence, we can decrease the time needed to resolve an alarm up to 50%. Which is huge, especially when you talk about uh, critical infrastructure like a hospital that is also a huge site, a very complex site with many different systems. You know, th this is exponential uh, as far as cost and, and, and consistency of operation if you can achieve 50% saving every time you have an error. Um, Kevin, thank you so much. We're going to have a lot more discussions into detail and some of these topics around every phase of this building, and then and then also listening to some of the experiences you had when you when you really got down into the into the mud and did this. Um, so I look forward to those. Um, at the very start, we talked about three things. We we talked about uh, you know what a digital twin is, why it's important for operations, and and some of the steps we have to consider to get there. Um, the first one was, what's a digital twin? Can you cover that quickly for us again? Uh, and, and then we'll skip through those points quickly because I think they're important for us for the next discussions as well. Yeah, you know, a digital twin is really the combination of BIM and sensor technology to really mm -hmm. enable then really efficient building operations from an energetical and a technical operations perspective so to have really smooth building operations. And the last important thing is, how do we get there? It's really about also having a BIM-based design for building automation systems, so fire safety, security, building automation, to come to the digital twin. Yeah? So this is really quickly yeah, said, this is what, what about. Yeah? I like it. I like it a lot. Kevin, thank you so much uh, for your time and, and for your expertise. I look forward to the next conversations, but thank you for the time today. Thank you, Jan. It was really a, a pleasure. It's always good. I'm looking fun. forward no, for the next is, meeting. <laughs> yeah, me as well. I can't wait for that. But uh, but thank you so much, and thank you to everyone who's listening. Please remember to comment, uh, share, like this episode, subscribe to us whether you're watching on YouTube or any of the other podcast uh, podcast platforms, and look out for the new episodes and more episodes to come with Kevin, where we're going to talk uh, in real detail about creating this digital twin, this operational twin for a building, uh, and some of the considerations and learnings that he had uh, throughout the process. So thank you again, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.